Good morning, everyone. My name is Sam Vaklin, and I am a professor of psychology and the author of books about personality disorders. Among them, Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. I've been invited to give a presentation at the Quantum House Summit in Brazil in November 2019. I've been told by the organizers that the number of places is limited. And so, first come, first win. My presentation will focus on narcissistic abuse. It is a phrase that I coined in 1995. And I felt the need to coin this phrase because I realized that abuse meted out by narcissists and psychopaths is very different and has different outcomes to abuse meted out by typical abusers abusers without personality disorders, sadists, and other abusers. Narcissistic abuse is a subspecies, sui generis. And why is that? Because narcissistic abuse is all-pervasive, exactly like narcissistic personality disorder. It affects the victim's cognitions, emotions, social functioning, environmental integration, and Resiliency, apropos our host. The victim of narcissistic abuse develops cognitive deficits and cognitive biases via processes such as gaslighting and ambient abuse. She develops emotional dysregulation, very similar to borderline personality disorder. The whole complex is known as complex PTSD, complex post-traumatic stress disorder or stress response. The victim is also socially isolated. The abuser makes sure of that. She is less integrated in her environment. She sometimes loses her workplace. So, narcissistic abuse is a totally immersive, immersive experience. It's an experience that pervades and permeates every aspect of the victim's personality, every behavior, every trait. It transforms the victim to such an extent that sometimes she herself cannot recognize herself, let alone her nearest and dearest. Recovering from narcissistic abuse is also, uh, requires also special measures and special techniques, unlike other forms of abuse. Because narcissistic abuse creates the equivalent of post-traumatic stress disorder, we have to borrow techniques from trauma treatments. We have to borrow techniques that used to be applied to Vietnam vets or victims of natural disasters or witnesses to horrific accidents. It is not only the domestic violence, not only the verbal and psychological abuse. These are classic hallmarks of most abusive um, encounters. Narcissistic abuse has something to do with brainwashing. It has to do with reprogramming the victim. It induces changes in the victim uh, that makes it very difficult for her to survive intact, to defend her boundaries and her identity. She is, in a way, invaded. It's like a body-snatching experience. And what we do is we try to reverse this. Survivors of narcissistic abuse have a far, far better chance of emerging, if not unscathed, than intact, if their level of resiliency is high, if anyhow they are fighters, if they are fighters in other fields of life, if they have been exposed to hardships, if they have overcome hurdles and obstacles, if they have some kind of life experience with other difficult situations. And, of course, if they have the necessary complex of character traits and the, the right kind of personality to survive such a torture. So we will be discussing in, uh, I will be discussing in the presentation together with my uh, wife, Lydia Rangelowska, who is also an expert on narcissistic abuse and more so on recovery. We will be discussing exactly these features. I will dwell more on the abuse itself and try to analyze it using novel techniques and novel ideas and novel concepts, um, things that have emerged from research only in the past 10 years. 
uh, Lydia will focus more on recovery. If you want to understand, if you want to understand codependence, patients who have endured and emerged from a relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath, this pres presentation may be uh, something like indispensable, because we are going to put in one place all the recent advances and all the discoveries we have made by interacting with literally tens or hundreds of thousands of victims and survivors online since 1995. It's a database the like of which no one has. No university, no academic institute, no government has this kind of database. Online, there are support groups and forums. I, I established the first one in 1999. There are support groups and forums with millions of victims and survivors. They contain a treasure trove of information which I am mining on a regular basis. I'm going to share this with you. So, if you want to be Okua, if you want to enhance your skills in coping with this kind of abuse and its aftermath, this is the right place for you. It's going to take place in the Quantum House, which is an unusual combination of um, a reservoir, a repository of solutions for both survivors and entrepreneurs. I don't think the conjunction is accidental, nor is it ridiculous. Actually, I think it's very wise and interesting. I think survivors would do well if they were to acquire entrepreneurial skills. And I'm not only referring to business-related entrepreneurial skills. Life as a whole is an endeavor, and entrepreneurial skills can enrich life and make it worth living. Also, they are very good as part of a recovery package. In the attempt to recover and heal and cure yourself, in the attempt to extricate yourself from an abusive relationship, to exorcise the demons, to reverse the cognitive de deficits and biases, to restore your emotions and sense of self-worth, emotional regulation and sense of self-worth. All this is aided and abetted by entrepreneurial skills. So I think the combination is both unique and extremely insightful. I have uh, also uh, been uh, the, um, uh, subjected to the assessment test, the quantum assessment test. And I have witnessed my wife administering it to others. She is certified. She was certified by Dr. Ricken. And I must say that it is one of the strongest, most powerful psychological tests I've ever come across. I've written a book about, about psychological tests. And most psychological tests have problems, severe problems with validity, uh, with specific, specificity, um, with self-reporting, with lack of structure, etc., etc. The quantum assessment test is amazing. It's amazing because with very few questions, it looks deceptively simple, even I would say primitive, but with very few questions, it elicits a complete, complete, utter description of the subject, of the test subject. And it is highly specific, and it is highly accurate, at least in my case, and the case of a few other individuals I have witnessed, my wife administering the test too. So, that's also a fascinating topic. Um, my wife may wish to dwell on it, or, or maybe, uh, and I'm sure Claudia will discuss it at length, but it's also a good reason uh, uh, to be in the summit, because I think this test is the future. It's easy to administer, it's available online, it's fully uh, the evaluation, the ranking, and the, and the, it, uh, the point, uh, point giving is fully automated. So I think that's the future of tests. And this test is so powerful, so incisive, and so insightful, that I would not be surprised if it establishes itself as the new standard in psychological testing. So, you see, there's a whole plate of tasty morsels from a variety of fields and, and uh, subjects. Uh, anything from abuse to psychological testing, from recovery to uh, new information gleaned from uh, a database of survivors and victims. A lot of things which you are not likely to be exposed to 
in any other setting environment. And so you're welcome. Don't forget the way I opened my, my uh, small speech. The number of places is limited and you will do well to secure yours now. So see you all. I'm looking forward to my uh, trip to Brazil and I'm looking forward to meeting all of you and answering your questions and dealing and tackling uh, any issue you might wish to raise, which is within my expertise, of course. Thank you.